might have heard your relatives or your friends talk about how they are suffering from cancer. Have you ever wondered what is this cancer and how it develops? In this series of videos, we will try to understand what is cancer, what is the mechanism behind cancer, what are some common types of cancers and what exactly is the difference between a cancer and a tumor because I am going to be using these words interchangeably in this video. To understand first of all what is cancer, you have to go back to the fact that your body is made up of trillions of cells. All organs in your body are made up of cells and all of these cells, they have a specific life cycle which means they are formed, they perform their functions and then they die off. When the cells are dying, they need to be replaced with new cells. And you might be familiar with the process by which the cells are replaced in our body that is mitosis. So when the cells are dividing by mitosis in a specific region, say these are the newly forming cells and these dotted lines, they depict the cells that are already existing in this region. The existing cells, they send out signals to the newly forming cells saying, hey, stop, we are also existing in this area, more of you cannot form because then we will not have enough space for all of us. And if everything is going on in the body perfectly, the newly forming cells, they listen to that signal and they stop dividing. This process is known as contact inhibition. But sometimes what happens is the cells lose their ability to perform contact inhibition. And when that happens, the cells, they keep dividing without stopping uncontrollably in that specific region itself. The region is not getting wider and the cells are going to keep dividing uncontrollably in that area and the mass of cells that is formed in that region is known as a neoplasm and the neoplasm is something that can develop into a tumor. But what causes the cells to lose contact inhibition and to divide uncontrollably? The answer to that lies within the genes. So you know that all cells in our body has DNA and within the DNA are specific regions known as genes that code for specific proteins. A lot of these proteins are involved in regulating cell cycle, cell division and also contact inhibition. But what happens is sometimes the genes that are involved in these processes, they are damaged and a DNA damage or a gene damage is known as a mutation. So some of these genes, when they end up mutated, the proteins that are formed, they are not effective enough in controlling these processes. So those defective proteins cause the entire system to collapse, which is what leads to the development of cancer. Now, what are these genes? So far, scientists have discovered three types of genes involved in the development of cancer. They are oncogenes, tumor suppressor genes and DNA repair genes. Let's first talk about what are oncogenes. So some genes in the DNA, they regulate cell growth and cell division. Those genes are also involved in controlling apoptosis, which is a process known as programmed cell death. When there is a damage in the cell, cell damage could be the organelle damage or even DNA damage, then those cells are not good for the body. They need to be destroyed or they need to be killed off to make way for healthy cells. The process by which these damaged cells are targeted for destruction is known as programmed cell death or apoptosis. So these genes that regulate cell growth and cell division, they are involved in the development of cancer. How? If you think about it, all of us have all these genes in all our cells. If oncogenes exist in the form of oncogenes, then we must be developing cancers of all cell types at all times. Like everybody must be developing cancer. But this is not what happens, right? How then do oncogenes lead to cancer? Oncogenes, they don't exist in the form of oncogenes at all times. They exist in the form of proto-oncogenes which can be thought of a precursor to these oncogenes. These proto-oncogenes are what are involved in regulating the cell cycle and cell division and apoptosis and everything if they are functioning normally. But when there is a mutation in any of these proto-oncogenes, they are converted into oncogenes. And when these are mutated, the proteins that are produced are no longer able to regulate cell growth and cell division or even apoptosis. That is what causes cells to grow uninhibitedly, uncontrollably, leading to the development of cancer. You can think of these oncogenes as the accelerator in a car. Say there is a car that is going in a road and there is a wall suddenly that appears in front of it. If the accelerator of the car is stuck, then the car is going to speed up and go hit the wall. 
So this can be thought of as how oncogenes and proto-oncogenes work. If the accelerator is working properly, then even if the car is going uncontrollably, we can decelerate and stop the car. But if the accelerator is stuck, that is when the proto-oncogenes are mutated and they form oncogenes, then there is no stopping the car, right? The car is inevitably going to go crash into the wall. But this begs the question, you have a brake, right? There is a brake in the car and the brake can stop the car from moving too fast. Is there any such brake in our body that prevents these proto-oncogenes from developing into oncogenes? Well, the answer is yes. The genes that sort of act as brakes to the car are tumor suppressor genes. So tumor suppressor genes are also known as anti-oncogenes because they are actively involved in making sure that the oncogenes do not form. That any mutation in the proto-oncogenes are detected and the cells are killed off before the mutation can begin to accumulate. A normal tumor suppressor gene will stop uncontrollable cell growth by detecting any mistakes in the proto-oncogenes. But sometimes there is a mutation in the tumor suppressor genes themselves. In that case, these mutated genes, these mutated proteins, they are incapable of detecting these mutated oncogenes. Even if the accelerator is still stuck, the brake has also failed. The accelerator is stuck, but you cannot slow down the car because the brakes have failed. That is what happens when the mutation is in the tumor suppressor genes themselves. These mutated TSGs, they cannot detect any other mutation in the cells and those mutations are going to keep accumulating and keep getting passed down to newly forming cells, which is what causes cancer. Now, what if you were to keep your car well maintained and you keep making sure that every part is being maintained properly? Is there something in our body that does that? Well, the answer to that question is yes. The maintenance of all our genes in our body is done with the help of DNA repair genes. So these genes, they detect and correct any DNA errors. So if there is a DNA error in the proto-oncogene or any mutation in the tumor suppressor gene, these DNA repair genes, they go and fix this problem. Either they go and correct this mutation, correct the DNA damage, or they target those cells for apoptosis. If that is happening properly, then even if there is a mutation in any of these genes, then cancer can be avoided because DNA repair genes are functioning properly. But this is also to a certain extent only. If the proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes have mutated so much that even the DNA repair genes cannot do their job, then that would again lead to cancer. But what if there is a mutation in the DNA repair genes themselves? And even if there is a mutation in these proto-oncogenes or tumor suppressor genes, then those proteins cannot detect any mutated oncogenes or tumor suppressor genes, which would lead to cancer. This is like all hell has broken loose in the car. It cannot be stopped now. The accelerator is stuck. The brakes have failed. The car is eventually going to go crash into the wall. You may be wondering, what causes these damages? What causes these mutations? We'll take a look at that in the next part of the video. But before we end this video, we'll try to understand the difference between tumor and a cancer. So I may have been using those terms interchangeably in this video, tumor and a cancer. But when there is an uncontrollable cell growth in a specific region, then the mass of cells in that region, they are known as a tumor. And if it is in one region only, say if these mass of cells are in your stomach and they are in your stomach only, then such a tumor is known as a benign tumor. Benign means they are localized to a single region. And many of these localized benign tumors can be removed with the help of surgery. But what happens is sometimes the cells in the tumor, they break off. So these cells, they break off they move into the bloodstream or even the lymphatic system and they travel to other parts of the body. Say from the stomach, it goes to the liver. And here in the liver, they start dividing uncontrollably. This is going to cause a tumor in the liver as well. When this is happening, when the cells have moved from one region, when the tumorous or cancerous cells have moved from one region and have started developing in another region, then that is known as metastasis. They are spreading to other regions. That is known as met metastasis. And this is what leads to cancer. So in this case, the tumor that now exists in two or more regions, that is known as a malignant tumor or a cancerous tumor. 
malignant tumors are more difficult to treat than benign tumors you will require a lot of different treatments to treat malignant tumors some advanced cases are also untreatable as well but this is the basic difference between a tumor and a cancer a benign tumor is localized to a single region a malignant or a cancerous tumor is when this benign tumor spreads to different parts in the body